How can the local church disciple people into practices such as silence and solitude, Sabbath, slowing simplicity? I think from the ground up. One of the mistakes that I think church leaders make, in particular in our current cultural moment, is they make assumptions that people have a rule of life and have a basic kind of structure of practices or spiritual disciplines that they feel comfortable with and attuned to how to read the Bible, how to pray, how to rest, how to engage with God at church. And I think actually we have to back up the train. There was a previous generation for whom that was more true because all of the practices of Jesus are a little bit better caught than they are taught, you know, like we pick them up ideally from our parents. If we grow up in a household of faith, we grow up and wake up in the morning and mom and dad are reading their Bible and praying in the morning and they kind of show us how to do it and they teach us how not just to read the Bible but how to encounter God in that space and let the Spirit and the truth form us into the image of Jesus himself. And that's all stuff that's kind of caught, taught to, but caught as we grow up. So that's gone for so many people that either don't come from a household of faith or it's just been swallowed up by the phone and the TV or whatever. So I think we have to think a little bit like a parent almost would, but for sophisticated, educated people and say, all right, how would we take somebody who's never had an experience of silence and solitude from Maybe let's start with five minutes every morning when you wake up before you touch your phone, sit there with God. And then maybe add to that, let's make it 10 minutes and read a psalm, but read the psalm slowly and prayerfully. And then how do you work people from there up to say a retreat where they'll take a day away at a monastery or a cabin or a friend's house and just spend the day in prayer and rest and quiet? That's a long gap. You can't just like throw people into the deep end of the pool. You know, people need baby steps, as Bob said so many years ago, like need to walk slowly into something like that. And so we're running practices at our church where we'll do like a teaching series, we'll write up actual practices that literally start with something very, very simple, accessible, open to all, and we'll week over week, over six to eight weeks, actually move people into some of these practices like silence, like Sabbath, like simplicity, you know? And so we're literally writing up. We're doing simplicity pretty soon. And, you know, week one will be like you go through your closet. And week two will be going through other house, you know, items in your house, you your bathroom and stuff, your garage. And, and then week three will begin to look at habits. And then week four will begin to look at priorities. And like, you know, just really kind of step by step helping people move into some of these practices that then once you kind of get them in your muscle memory, then you can kind of adapt and explore and experiment and really tailor fit them to your personality and your stage of life. So I think how local churches need to do it is they need to stop making assumptions that people know how to read their Bible, know how to rest, know how to fast, know how to pray. And they need to give people a biblical theology of each one because otherwise if people don't have a why behind it, it just becomes a new form of legalism or works righteousness or a self-improvement project for Jesus. You have to constantly hold the why before people. The end, all practices are a means to an end. The end is not Sabbath or simplicity or something. The end is life in the kingdom of Jesus, abiding, becoming people who bear the fruit of love and joy and peace. So you have to constantly keep that before people, then give people a biblical theology, but then we can't stop with like an aspirational sermon. It then has to go to concrete, easy, accessible practices, like very clear exercises to begin to work these into your muscle memory.